Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today we're looking again at our fuel delivery system on our 2007 Suzuki GSXR 1000. Now listen, we've already determined by taking a fuel pressure measurement that it had enough pressure, but it was falling off uh, under load. So what we're going to do, go ahead and pull it out and see what we need to rebuild on the inside of that fuel pump assembly. So if you're ready, I'll go grab a couple of tools, we'll get it pulled off, and I'll show you how to get it done. When people start thinking about a fuel pump, most of the time they just want to throw their hands up and replace the whole thing. Don't be afraid of it. This is going to be a skill level two, but as long as you pay attention to what you're doing, it's not going to be that bad. Let's go through some of the tools that you're going to need to pull this off. Really short list on this one. Just a Phillips, a flathead, a pick tool, 3 8 extension, 3 8 ratchet, a 5 millimeter Allen. Now if you would, reference our exploded diagrams. This gives you an exact picture of everything that's available for this particular motorcycle and the pieces that you may need. So once you've got your tools and your parts together, I can go over to the machine and show you how to get it done. All right guys, first thing we need to do, let's go ahead and take the negative off the battery before we lift up the tank and start getting it disconnected. So take off the negative and just let it lay out to the side. With those disconnected, you just need a five millimeter Allen back at the back to get that pivot bolt out. And what you'll notice is inside the, uh, the barrel, there's going to be a, uh, an aluminum spacer, I guess would be the right terminology for it. You want to make sure you don't lose that. Lift up the tank. There it is right there. All right, I should have mentioned this earlier, but um, if your tank is full of fuel, go ahead and siphon some of it out. Mine's got maybe a gallon or so left in it, so it's going to be pretty easy to manage. When these things are completely full, that can be a bit of a handful. So, that being said, let's go ahead and lift her off and go to the teardown bench. All right, let's go ahead and get the uh, fuel assembly taken out of the tank. And it's just another set of five millimeter Allens. Looks like there are five of them. Kind of mark where this little holder is. Make sure we get it back in the same place. When we go to put it back together. All right, lift it out. Now we need to rotate a little bit. Make sure you don't bend the fuel level arm. What we're going to be looking for here is we're going to take off this top bracket that's actually holding the fuel level assembly on, get that out of the way, and then we'll start pulling apart the actual assembly. Because what we're looking for inside this, you'll see the, uh, the motor itself, and then at the very bottom of the motor there is a pickup screen or a filter, a pre-filter for the, uh, the fuel system. Above that we're going to see a, uh, a fuel pressure regulator, which I believe is okay on this one. We're still going to inspect the O-rings to make sure they haven't failed and or split or anything like that. That would cause the pressure to fall off, as well as it not being able to maintain pressure by pulling it through a, a stopped up filter. So, let's get these Phillips heads out of the way and we will lift off fuel level cinder assembly. Now, if you would just guide these wires out and up and then note where this one is. That's actually going to go to the red wire if you look at the other side of the uh, assembly. There. Now we can just move that over to the side. All right, here's where it starts to get a little fun. Is what we want to do is pull this top section of the assembly all the way out. So let's get that other wire disconnected, which goes to the top of our pump. Now, okay, that's actually what we wanted to have happen because we're having to break loose those uh, O-ring seals. Now, as promised, that right there is the pickup filter for the, uh, the bottom of the fuel pump. And I can go ahead and tell you, <laughs> that's looking a little rough because, believe it or not, that is supposed to look like that when it was new. So I think that may be our, our big problem right there. But I'm still going to go through and look at the different O-rings just because we are here. I mean, I don't want to just say, hey, replace that filter and go on, and there, then there'll still be another problem. Because you got to remember, 
This bike's how old? It's the 2007? Wow. So yeah, we need to, uh, we need to look at that. Let's go ahead and split this apart. Now, let's see if we can get that filter to come off. There we go. All right, let's put that in the housing to the side. Now what you're looking at here is the actual fuel pump motor itself. And then this part here is the uh, pressure regulator. So we want to pull that back, take a look at our O-ring. Ours look to be okay, but they are so inexpensive. I'm at least going to go ahead and replace that one right there. Get that back in place. All right, just a quick note. If yours was reading too high or too low, it could have been this, this uh, regulator was stopped up. And we do offer that separately. So instead of replacing the entire assembly, you may want to go for that first. And that could straighten out your problem. But ours, I believe, was caused by this. So let's go ahead and start putting her back together. Let's go ahead and get our filter in. to go on there now. Alright, now let's see if we can get it slid back onto the framework here. The real trick is with a brand new filter, I have to push this edge down to get this filter up and out of that pick up tubes way. There we go. Make sure you've got all these sections in the slots like they're supposed to be. There we go. She's bottomed out. Now let's go ahead and bring over our fuel gauge assembly. two ground wires. Remember, the level sensor goes to the red wire and then our motor actually goes to the yellow with a red stripe. Alright, with the assembly back together, let's go ahead and get her put back in the fuel tank. Just like that. Now, let's just get our uh, five millimeter Allen's back in. All right, with this snug down, let's head back over to the machine and get it reattached. All right, just lay it there temporarily, kind of off to the side, because remember we have to get that little uh, sleeve inside. Now, lower it down. Get our pivot pin back in. Now, lift it back up, prop it, and then get all the connections redone. Let's go ahead and start with the actual fuel line. You just want those two tabs to get inside these two little rectangular areas. It'll click when it actually is in the right position, just like that. Next, let's go for our electrical. And don't forget your two vent hoses. One's a little bit bigger than the other, so don't reverse them. Now, lower it back down. Let's go ahead and reconnect the negative on our battery, and we will just about be done. Do a quick test while she's sitting on the bench, just to make sure she primes up and fires up. All right, she's primed once. make sure she fires off. All right. Well, from here, all you should have to do is reattach the bolt up front and uh, put your seat on. But as, as you can tell, uh, mine's gonna need a little bit more assembly before it heads out on the road. Well, listen, if you need any of the parts that we use to um, fix this for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com? We can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Till next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.